Okay, today we're going to talk about local administrator password solution or LAPS. This is a simple solution from Microsoft to manage the local administrator account on domain joined computers. Passwords are stored in Active Directory and protected by the access control list. Let's look at the details. There's five bits to download. Basically, there's client and management software incorporated into these MSIs, and then you got some document. So we'll go ahead and download it. Selecting all the files. So it's a remarkably simple document. Most of the work's done in PowerShell. There'll be a little bit of group policy work and you might have to manually do some work in the permissions of the OUs that your computers might be residing in. So let's take a look. So I'm going to do this work on my domain controller here, Tucson DC1. You're familiar with it from all of my other videos. I'm just going to copy down the installer. So when you look in the installer options here, this first item here is the group policy extension. This needs to be installed on the client machine in order to manage the local administrator password. Now you see the options here are for management tools. So I'm going to toggle this off and I'm going to install all of the management tools. Okay, we get the password management user interface, the PowerShell module, and the GPO administrative templates. All right, so that's installed, quite simple. Let's take a look at our Active Directory here. We have computer objects, and within computer objects, oh, interesting, we've got a server there looking for my Win 10 workstation, so I'm going to make a new OU. So we're going to focus on using LAPS on workstations in this aaco.local domain. I'm going to go ahead and make a OU for servers as well. That way it'll let us delegate things out correctly. Okay, so my Win 10 workstation is in the workstation's OU underneath computer objects. This will give us something to work on in LAPS. Pretty easy. Two parts of the installation, the management computer and the clients that you want to manage. The management computer is simply wherever you installed the management software. And again, it's pretty lightweight. You get the GUI here. You put in the computer name and it returns the local administrator password and tells you when it expires. So that's what they're outlining here. They're saying the GPL, basically it's the client side execution package. It's a single DLL that needs to be registered. Installation for the CSE is just the admin password DLL. And when you install it on a workstation, it's gonna reside there. Okay, so they're showing us to install the management tools. We're talking about SCCM here. You can do it manually this way. The most important thing is to get that file in the correct path and then get the DLL registered in Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and install the client side software on my Win 10 workstation. Now here I'm just basically selecting the first option. Okay, so we've already configured the client then. Let's go ahead and continue on with the document here. AD preparation. First is modifying the schema. Basically, you're going to add two attributes to the computer object. And these attributes are going to be the admin password and the admin password expiration date. It's all done through PowerShell. Import module admin password.ps and then we're going to run this command update admin password ad schema off we go to our next step here we're going to be managing the permissions on these two attributes that we've just added to computers so if we had already delegated full control to say an administrative group like workstation admins on this OU we have to revoke the permissions to read that attribute if we didn't want workstation admins to read that let's just take a quick look at security I haven't done anything different in security in this domain 
but we're going to work through this anyway. So we're going to look in advanced. So now you can see just basic default account operators, got enterprise domain controllers, domain admins. Now self is going to be interesting here because Laps is going to change the behavior of self so that computers can manage that password in Active Directory. A lot of domain stuff, and none of this is, this is all just default. I could sort by the principle. And so we see account operators, administrators, authenticated users, creator owners, domain admins, enterprise domain controllers. Everyone cannot delete anything. And then stuff around self. But what they're interested in is they want to make sure there isn't any delegated access. Let's take a look. I can show you where we will see that access. Is the ability to see all attributes. Yeah, all extended rights. Basically, if this group or user has all extended rights, they will be able to see these two attributes. So we're going to take it away from groups that we don't want it to have that right and we're going to give that right to groups that we do want to have the right to read that attribute and that's all done in PowerShell here they give you a handy PowerShell here to see who has access let's take a look you can do it manually and that's what I was just showing you and they're saying yeah that all extended rights is what gives you that access and cancel out of there cancel cancel we know that OU name is workstations and they give us something extended right holders is the attribute that we want to return in our table here so you can see really just like system and domain admins have that privilege on that container so we're not going to revoke that because domain admins they should be able to do whatever they want right so what we are going to do is let's create a group help desk I'm going to add a, a co user to the help desk. He's also logged into Win 10 right now. So I'm going to log him off again. So he can get that group membership. So we've seen who has the extended rights, basically the extended right to read those two attributes. So now we're going to set the permissions. So first we got to add machine rights. The computer accounts are self, and they have to be able to manage those two attributes for themselves. So here we are going to just set admin password computer self permission and specify the org unit. Okay, it says it's done. If you're interested, we should probably just go take a look. Let's go into ADSI edit. There it is. Okay, so it can write, so self can write the MS MCS admin password. And then this other one is something to do about the password expiration. So self can read and write. Yeah, there we go. Read MS MCS admin password expiration time and write. MSMCS admin password expiration time. This is basically the rights that are required to change the password. So basically all computer objects in this container are able to manage their password and reset their password on themselves. Okay, so that's good. So now we're going to add the user rights. Okay, and we said that group was help desk. OU was workstations. Let's talk about Active Directory for a second. It's really smart to create a top level OU for each different type of object. Because what's going to happen if you do like regional locations, you're going to have multiple workstation OUs, multiple server OUs. It really gets kind of messy when you do that. So you want to 
use your top level OUs to manage different object types, computer objects, security groups, user objects. And then you can subdivide regionally underneath that as you need. Okay, so we've delegated that right to read those out to the help desk. We'll go back in and look. I'm just gonna make sure I refresh that. Properties, security, advanced. Yeah, you see help desk went by. Yep, there it is, help desk. Descend, descendant computer objects. There it is. So here, we can read the password expiration time. And here we can read the password. Seems like we're missing one. Let's take a look. Oh, okay, so that was read password permissions. If you want to write Basically, this is the reset password reset permission. So let's go ahead. I'm going to give that to help desk too. That way you'll see that read write on the password expiration time just like self computers had. All right, what's next on this? You can use multiple groups separated by commas. In their example here, they have administrator, help desk, password admins. Now we're up to group policy, and this is taking advantage of that group policy administrative template for labs. So let's go get into group policy now. Okay, we're going to make a new group policy object. New. There we go. I'm going to call it workstation labs. That should be pretty clear. All of the settings we need are underneath the administrative templates for labs. There's basically four settings here. Let's expand this out and take a look. So in order, they're talking about first, enable local admin password management. So if you enable it, then the local admin password is managed. Next, password parameters. This is probably where you want to spend the most amount of time understanding the needs of your business, etc. There's like a mass, maximum password age, and you're also defining the complexity of the password. I'm just going to use the example here. But you notice like password age and days minimum is one day. The most you can do is 365 days. We're just going to do the defaults. Mix everything up. Password length is 14, 30 days expiration. Administrator account name. This would only be if you've added an account to the local administrators group and it's not the default local account because it will find the default local account even if you rename it because it's got a well-known SID. So only configure this if you use a custom local admin account. But we're going to leave this not configured. Now here's where we lock things down a little bit. Okay, now here, this is where you're going to control whether or not that password age can be extended. When you enable this setting, plan password expiration longer than password age is dictated by password settings policy and is not allowed. When such expiration is detected, the password is changed immediately and password expiration is set to policy. When you disable or not configure, Password expiration time may be longer than required by password settings policy. If you've got some guy that's going to be out in the middle of nowhere for 364 days, you might be able to extend that password expiration beyond the default 30 days if you do not configure that. If you enable that, then that 30 day expiration will be enforced. I'm going to go ahead and leave it not configured so we have that option. Again, you're going to want to work with your security team to understand the implications and what the business requirements are. Okay, so we're done with this GPO. Let's link it to the workstation OU. Okay, so let's log into Win10A and we're going to apply this group policy. There we go, GP Update Force. 
Okay, so that says the user and computer policies have been updated. So in theory, we should be able to go look at the attributes of this computer. I'm logged into a domain controller as a domain admin, and like I demonstrated, I have the rights to view those extended properties. So we should just be able to simply go in here, view advanced features. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh just to be sure. Properties, attributes, and there we go. Got a real messy password. Nobody's gonna be able to remember, probably won't be able to guess. And then we see the admin password expiration date. So now, because AACO users on the help desk, we're going to install that tool and see if he can use it. Now here, I'm just going to add the UI. And I'm going to go ahead and give him the PowerShell module. We don't need the GPO editor templates. And we already have the GPO extension installed. That's what set that password on the local administrator account that's stored in the properties of the computer. We saw that there. Okay, so AACO users on the help desk, and he wants to look up the password for Win10A. He's got his laps client UI here. And there's the password and the expiration. You can also use this set button to immediately set the password again. So pretty simple. There's also a PowerShell method to obtain that. So we saw it, you can see it in Active Directory, User and Computers, the Attribute Editor, if you have the appropriate permissions. You can use the User Interface, and there's a PowerShell, Get Admin Password Computer Name. Okay, so here you see the Reset Password functionality, and here you can plan the expiration for the future to do so, enter the desired date and time into the respective field. So that's where you could extend that password expiration and set the password and then that guy can go out in the field for 364 days and still the help desk will know the local administrator password. And here's a PowerShell to reset the admin password. And there's troubleshooting, but we didn't have any troubleshooting. You can turn on some auditing and check out the event logs, but we didn't need to do any troubleshooting because we did it right and it worked. All right. Thank you very much. Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share. Thank you very much.